everyone, today I thought I would show you all the books that I have bought during lockdown. I thought I would start with the books I bought last Saturday in Gower Street and Foils. I bought three Oxford World Classics and these really take me back. For a bit of context for those of you who don't know, I did an MA in 18th and 19th century literature and even though my thesis, my dissertation was on the 19th century Victorian social novels, the majority of my actual study was on 18th century writing. For me, Oxford World Classics is like the go-to for 18th century literature. They tend to publish the most and they also tend to publish them a bit cheaply but the notes on the text in these books is normally really really good and the introductions are also great. The first novel is Memoirs of a Woman of Pleasure by John Cleland. This is a piece of libertine literature and was published uh, between 1748 and 1749. This is considered to be one of the most scandalous pieces of English literature not only in the 18th century but just in general. For my 18th century MA I spent a lot of time reading 18th century porn and 18th century erotica which is what Memoirs of a Woman of Pleasure is. It was absolutely fascinating and it is a novel I've read before but I really wanted to do a video on this novel and on the 18th century so I kind of wanted to read it and annotate it and study a little bit more and then share my thoughts with you. The only sad thing about this edition is that there are no pictures um, but if I do a video I definitely share them with you and just give up any hope I ever had of being monetized on YouTube. Then we have two novels by Daniel Defoe. Firstly we have Mole Flanders which was published in 1722 and is one of the earliest pieces of English literature. Twelve year whore, five times a wife, whereof once to her own brother, twelve year a thief, eight year a transported felon in Virginia, at last grew rich, lived honest and died penitent. As I said, the notes and the text, the introductions are always good, but this one has a map. And now I have an idea about filming a video, a London tour through Mole Flanders. There's, I have so many ideas. Then we move on to Roxana, which is a Defoe novel I've never read before. I actually picked this up on recommendation of Emma Angeline, who is an amazing YouTuber who I really love. And she studied Complit and this is one of her all-time favourite novels, and I'm pretty certain she did her dissertation on this. A woman ought rather to die than to prostitute her virtue and honour. Uh, this was published in 1724, and it's Defoe's last and darkest novel. If you haven't already noticed the theme of these 18th century novels, it is scandal, sex, secrets, drama. Uh, they're a little bit bawdy. I just noticed that this one also has an introduction of notes by John Mullen. John Mullen is my favourite academic. He writes a lot on Jane Austen, and he is amazing. If you ever get to see John Mullen speak, go and see him. And look at that. Isn't that amazing? One thing I noticed with my YouTube channel is that when I did my BA and I did my BA dissertation on Virginia Woolf, a lot of my content has been about Virginia Woolf, but actually 18th century is a large part of my identity in the same way the 19th century is. So I wanted to share a little bit more of you, so I wanted to read more and give some proper thoughtful reviews, so I hope to get to these very soon. Another book I brought on recommendation from Emma is uh, Michelle de Montagne and this is On Friendship. This is one of the Tiny Great Ideas books. I've never read any Michelle Montagne and to be honest I haven't read much philosophy. I read excerpts at university and well I read more at university but I haven't read anything since and I don't think I've read anything by Montagne before. I don't feel quite ready to pick up a giant collection of essays so I thought this would be the perfect way kind of as an introduction to his writing and let's be honest these editions are just absolutely stunning. And this is why I love bookshops because I went in knowing I wanted Roxana, knowing I wanted Memoirs of a Woman of Pleasure and Michelle de Montagne and everything else and I just saw this because of this beautiful kind of design and realised I will love this. This is a book designed for me and what I need right now. This is Parallel Lives, Five Victorian Marriages by Phyllis Rose. This is a classic cult piece of feminist criticism and was recently republished by Dawn Books this year. First of all, just look how beautiful these end pages are. Look at these end pages, how gorgeous! So Rose discusses Jane Welsh and Thomas Carlyle, Effie Gray and John Ruskin, which I will be super interested in, Catherine Hogarth and Charles Dickens, uh, Harriet Taylor and John Stuart Mill, and George Eliot and George Henry Lewis. I also noticed on the back there was a quote from Rebecca Mead, the author of My Life in Middlemarch, which is another book I would like to read sometime in the future when I finally actually finish Middlemarch. As I've just said, I'm approaching the end of Middlemarch now and I've really enjoyed George Eliot's writing and I wanted to read another novel by her. So I picked up The Mill on the Floss because this is just one of 
like her most famous pieces of writing. It's funny because I've actually never been drawn to this novel, but when I put it on my Instagram saying, would people recommend it, have people read it? Everybody said they absolutely love this novel and some of my favourite people in the world say that uh, Maggie Tulliver is one of their favourite uh, 19th century heroines. They've also said that it's very sad and I love a sad book. I mean, I love Hardy and he is as depressing as it gets, I think, in Victorian writing. Tragic and Moving, The Mill on the Floss is a novel of grand passions and tormented lives. I mean, that sounds like my autobiography. <laughs> Thinking about sad and depressing books, but like Thomas Hardy has to stand aside now because people have said that A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara is one of the most depressing books I've ever read and that it will completely destroy me. I picked this up in East London in one of my favourite bookshops, which is Libraria. I think actually they would have stamped my book. I love when bookshops do this. I think because I am reading Middlemarch at the moment, I feel like I can conquer every big novel that has always been on my list. This has always been kind of on my radar, but I haven't ever really fancied reading it. But for some reason, when I saw it in Libraria, I was just drawn to it and knew it was the time to pick it up. I really know nothing about this novel. And in a lot of ways, I don't really want to know too much about it. I just want to throw myself in and hope that I come out the other side. The next book, like Parallel Lives and like The Little Life, I just saw in Waterstones. I knew that I wanted to read it. This is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, and I've seen a lot about this book, but not in this cover. So when I saw it, I was just suddenly drawn to it because of this beautiful blue, um, but I didn't realise it was Pachinko. Because I work in publishing, I think I'm even more intrigued when publishers change the cover of the books and the copy of the books and why they've made those changes and which audiences they want to reach with the different versions and obviously by changing to this they just caught me because I looked at it and I thought this will be a beautiful historical novel and I'm in and I think this is what they wanted me to think. This is a novel that I didn't know too much about but all I read was the copy at the bottom which says spanning nearly a hundred years of history Pachinko is an unforgettable story of love, sacrifice, ambition and loyalty told through four generations of one family. I then just happened to stumble across an interview with the author talking about um, being Korean Japanese and racism within Japanese society and I was completely captivated so I'm excited to get to this. Now we move on to two books that I actually have read. I know a book haul that also contains a mini review. Who would have thought it? Natives Race and Class in the Ruins of Empire by Akala. This was our book club read at work and you may be able to tell by all of these dog ears and all of my annotations. I annotated this book absolutely loads. I thought this was incredible. I loved this book and I loved the kind of the mixture of a personal biography with history and a study of kind of racial relations in the UK. I read it in one or two sittings, it was incredible and addictive. It made me angry and uncomfortable, which is exactly what books like this should do. It made me want to challenge everything and made me even more aware of the white supremacist society that we live in. It brought up really interesting conversations about the construction of race. Um, and I think especially because it is about English history, and I think England has a, an amazing habit of just pushing everything under the carpet and not talking about it and saying that race is kind of an American problem or it doesn't happen in England when it does. We are an incredibly racist society um, and it is institutional as much as it is in America. For me this felt very much like an introduction and the next book I feel like even though the next book is still just as accessible I think this would be a great book to start if you wanted to know more about um, black British history and the empire and then I would suggest going on to the next book that I'll talk about now. The next book is Black and British, A Forgotten History by David Alusoga. This is one of the best books I've ever read. I think this will be one of my top favourite books of the year. I think it is a book that I want everybody to read. It highlighted so much of the stuff that we are just not taught at history. And it's not that we're not taught it, we're taught a different type of history, a different narrative, the winner's narrative of history. It goes through the whole timeline of Black British history and therefore undermines everything we know about British history and the empire. Alice Sogo is actually one of my favourite historians. If you haven't already seen his BBC series called A House Through Time, I can't recommend it enough. He was also on an Intelligence Squared debate about monuments with Afwa Hirsch, who I think is phenomenal, and the conversation was really interesting. I'm personally all for 
tearing down pretty much every monument of any person who's a shit human being um, but it was interesting to see it hear other opinions there are other books that i bought during this lockdown but i actually featured them in a vlog which is a reading vlog and they include hamlet the switch and the rat line so i will leave the link to that video in that description because i explained them pretty fully so i didn't really want to do it twice but i thought i would end this video on a book that was actually gifted to me um, and it is this beautiful folio edition of Wuthering Heights. Every couple of years or so, my mom buys me a folio edition for my birthday or for Christmas. We keep an eye on the folio sale, like the new setters, they have really good sales. Um, and I only collect folios of my favourite all-time novels, and Wuthering Heights is one of them. They all come in these sleeves, but look how beautiful. I don't know if you can see the gold. At the top you have Wuthering Heights. I just love how beautiful it looks and they're also little birds. What is so special about folio editions is not only that they're like beautiful I guess collector's items, it's also the fact that they get artists to illustrate them. I think this edition might be one of my all-time favourites. My favourite edition of any folio book ever because of these ghostly illustrations. I just really want some of these framed, I think they're absolutely gorgeous. So they are all the books that I have bought in lockdown. Please let me know if any of them stand out to you, any that you have read or that you want to read and we can have a discussion in the comments. That man is still with his car, Ben! The man's still with his car! The man's still with his car, look. I see. Yeah, look. He keeps looking up at me, wondering what I'm doing. Don't look at him like that. He's honestly been there. What time's it now? Uh, half four. He's been five, there yeah, since hours. half eleven. Yeah, he's still there. Fancy Lexus. Is that what it is? I, I'm still filming.